Hi, this is Stu Miniman. Thank you for joining us for Cube Conversations. Here with Jeff Kelly in the Wikibon headquarters in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Uh, Jeff uh, released the third annual Wikibon Big Data Market uh, Forecast uh, earlier this year, and uh, we're going to get an update today on the big data application market. So, Jeff, uh, it's it said that big data applications are really going to be where the most value is going to be created in this wave of uh, technology. Can you give us a state of the big data application market? Sure, and it's still great to be here. Um, so the big data application segment of the market, which we sized recently, uh, came out to about $1.6 billion. Now you, you think that's a pretty big number, and it is. Um, but the reality is the majority of that uh, revenue comes from business intelligence applications, uh, data mining uh, software, uh, and more horizontal type tools that are used to visualize, do some analysis of data, and less around kind of the prepackaged big data applications that leverage big data analytics, um, kind of target specific business problems. So generally speaking, the big data application market is still pretty small, um, you know, and, and absolutely I agree with you, that's where a lot of the value is going to be because that's where a business user, for instance, is going to use these applications to solve a specific problem with all these insights that we're getting from the data crunching underneath the covers. So, 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 Jeff, I remember looking at one of the reports you had done uh, a year or so ago, and it seemed that custom was still the kind of primary application for big data. What really makes it so difficult uh, to develop these big data applications? Yeah, well, they're much different than your typical enterprise application. Your typical enterprise application is dealing with usually one data source and one underlying type of data. Uh, so with big data applications, you've got, from a technology perspective, the challenge is you've got new types of technology you've got to understand, like Hadoop and NoSQL, um, and the different types of data sources you've got to bring in. Almost by definition, big data analytics takes into account multiple sources of data. So that's one challenge. You've got to have that expertise. Uh, the other is you've got to understand data science, machine learning, and all the really hard analytics work that you've got to do, which, again, as we've, we've covered at Wikibon, you know, there are, there's a real lack of kind of data scientists out there, um, and people with those types of skills to do that hard science, data science. And then, of course, the other thing is domain knowledge. So you want to tackle specific business problems. That's how you're going to really get the value from these applications. So if you're doing a fraud detection um, application in, in you know, financial services, for example, you've got to have that domain knowledge to know what you're looking for, um, to, to speak the language, to know what the data sources are, those kinds of things. So to build these applications successfully, you've got to merge those three things, the technology, uh, the science, and the uh, domain expertise, and that's just a challenge to, uh, challenge to do. Okay, so, so Jeff, with all those challenges that you laid out there, are you optimistic that we are you know, close to seeing you know, kind of broad expansion of the big data application market? I am, uh, you know, for a few reasons. Um, one, I think the underlying infrastructure that's required uh, before you can start building applications on top of that infrastructure is starting to harden and really mature. So we've seen things like last year specifically, uh, we saw the introduction of Yarn, uh, yet another resource negotiator. Uh, for Hadoop, which really allows Hadoop to be a multi-application framework. So no longer is it just kind of this batch analytics platform. You can do streaming analytics, you can do graph uh, analytics, and do more machine learning. So any any number of new types of applications can now be built on top of Hadoop. And that was a real stumbling block, I think, um, in terms of building applications on top of that framework. Um, some of the other things, of course, um, you know, we hear a lot about the studies that the CMO is, gonna inc is increasingly um, taking over basically budget and spending around technology. Um, at some point, some even suspect that at some point the CIO is going to lose out to the CMO in terms of the biggest spender on technology. Uh, the reason I cite this, I think that's a good example, or a good leading indicator, I might say, that we're going to see more focus on these big data applications because CMOs, marketing types, don't really care about a lot of the underlying technology. They're not going to be spending these dollars on databases and uh, things like Hadoop. They're, they're going to spend it on applications that help them solve business problems. So we all know that the vendors go where the money is. So I, uh, I think that that's going to help spur some of the adoption, uh, or I should say creation of these big data applications. Um, and then the other thing is just general maturity of the market. Um, you know, we've gotten to the point now where we're seeing really smart people from early adopters and really the pioneers in big data analytics, like people from Facebook and LinkedIn and even people from places like Bank of America start to leave those organizations, start their own, uh, take their expertise, start their own companies focused on building these applications. So it's very early, but I, I am optimistic, and I think, you know, we've declared in the past, and we're not the only ones guilty of this, that, you know, this year or that year is the year of, in this case, big data applications. I'm not ready to declare that for 2014, but I am encouraged by some of these signs that I just cited.
Okay, great. So good to see that you're making progress. Jeff, I know you're talking to all the players out there, talking to the practitioners, the data scientists. You know, what's really catching your eye out there? Who would you say are, are some of the key examples that we should look at in the big data application space today? Mm -hmm. Well, as I said, it's still very early, but you know, just to hear Wikibon being uh, an analyst covering this market, I'm lucky enough to talk to a lot of entrepreneurs who are starting new companies. Uh, one company that kind of sh caught my attention was a company called Wise.io. Um, and these are some really smart guys from uh, Cal Berkeley, uh, astrophysicists. These are, you know, PhDs. These are, these are the rocket scientists, if you will, uh, who are working on solving some of these problems. And they're building applications, um, again, very early. They really haven't come to market with their applications yet. But they're building applications that, uh, in the case of Wise.io, bring in different data sources from a lot of the SaaS applications that people use from for CRM like Salesforce or other things, and then leveraging all that data to create yet new insights that marketers or other line of business people can use. So that's one company. Another that we've talked about on the Cube before, of course, is Traceda. Um, Avi met his company, he's former Bank of America, and he's working on uh, applications that leverage Hadoop and some of the underlying um, and related technologies to do tackle things like fraud detection for financial services firms, um, marketing optimization, things like that. So. Uh, those are a couple companies from the startup scene that I think are pretty interesting. Um, but what I'm also encouraged by, and what I think there's a huge opportunity for some some of the legacy vendors, if you will, um, I mean, when you think about enterprise applications, a lot of people think SAP. Um, you know, with the introduction of HANA, uh, they've started to build out some new applications around, uh, specifically leveraging multiple data sources. For the for the most part, however, in uh, focusing more on fast data, if you will, real time analytics. Um, things like a recent application they debuted was a genomic analyzer to help kind of track and analyze data throughout the genomic research process. Um, another company that's really interesting, uh, and you don't necessarily think of as an application company, you think of them as a data warehouse company, is Teradata. So Teradata is starting to uh, really put a lot of muscle behind their uh, marketing applications that leverage all the work that Teradata has done over the years in data warehousing, but now bringing in other sources of data, leveraging some of their partnerships with companies like Hortonworks, um, to bring in and build applications for marketers. Um, and it, this kind of relates to what I mentioned earlier, that the CMO is really starting to drive a lot of purchases, and I think companies like Teradata recognize that. So they're starting to put some of their efforts into applications that sit on top of the data layer um, that are, are uh, use analytics underneath to kind of drive insights, but are aimed at uh, marketers and more business type of people uh, to solve specific Problems. Yeah, so, so, so Jeff, it's interesting. In the cloud space that I watch, there's definitely that battle for developers. And, and I got one last question for you. When I look at some of the platforms that are being developed, you know, the platform as a service has has really seemed to kind of gain some uh, increased momentum since uh, kind of Pivotal spun out from EMC and VMware. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got a big partnership with GE uh, doing with IBM, who announced Bluemix at IBM Pulse. We were at a couple of weeks. Uh, you've got Red Hat doing OpenShift. Um, do you see an intersection between some of those kind of the DevOps cloud guys uh, and you know, kind of this big data application space? Seems to, seems to be some, uh, some similarities into going after the, de the developers there. I think there's definitely going to be an overlap. Um, you know, when you talk about big data applications, you definitely got to take that DevOps uh, approach because uh, you you're constantly need to evolve and adapt the applications uh, as new data sources come in, new types of analytics you want to look at. Um, so that DevOps approach, I think, does fit with big data application development. Um, you know, I think it's still very early, and we'll see uh, to the extent that it would be very interesting to see, for example, um, kind of the relationship between DevOps and data scientists and how they work together. Because um, one of the other, I think, challenges to building these big data applications that I was talking about earlier is that you've got to marry all that science, as I said, with actual application developments. And you've got a team of really smart data scientists, for example, find some great insights and mountains of data, and now you want to productionize that in an application. Well, that's where the data scientist and the application developer need to come together. Um, and that's an area that's, I think, underexplored at this point and definitely something worth watching. Okay, well, Jeff, thank you so much for the update on the big data applications. Uh, if, if you're not familiar with uh, all of Wikibon's information, go to wikibon.org. If you go to wikibon.org slash big data, you'll find all of the market reports, uh, analysis, and that's always free. Uh, check out the Cube. Go to siliconangle.tv to see uh, recent and upcoming events, and uh, be sure to check the SiliconANGLE YouTube channel for future Cube conversations. Uh, this is Stu Miniman with Jeff Kelly from the Wikibon headquarters in Marlboro, Mass. Thanks for joining us.